I've just been asked a great question in a live stream, and that is, what is design thinking? So let's start from the beginning. There's six steps in the design thinking process, and the reason we call it a process is, it's basically, it's, it's, it's a journey you follow to get to an end goal, which is designing something that people love. That's the whole point of this. We don't know when we're going into this what we actually uh, want to design. We just know that there's people that have got a problem and we want to find out what they want and we want to design for it. So let's uh, take a look at this through designing a new house. So we'll start off at the first stage and that's um, it's empathize. It's, it's who are we actually designing for? So let's let's take this example of building a house. We um, we first of all we just don't go laying bricks and, and designing something. We need to know who's going to live in the house because it is it a single person or is it a, a large family of eight people because that will dramatically change what we do. And when we're designing websites and apps, we can use this process. And basically, you can use this process for anything really. It's it's great. Any problem um, that has people, then we can use this for. So we do lots of different tasks. And as UX designers, we can uh, we can do. There's two main types of research qualitative and quantitative. So qualitative is we, um, it means quality. We talk to the people one-on-one -on -one and we find out what do they want, uh, a, a little bit about them. Uh, and, and then we do a quantitative, which is a survey if we have lots of people. In this example, we just have one family, so we're gonna do qualitative research uh, and we're gonna make some personas because we need to know who uh, is living in our house. And then that allows us in the next step, which is define, that means um, we've got our research, we're going to define the problem. And uh, that is, okay, we have a family of four people. They need a house and, um, you know, some of them might have disabilities. Someone might not be able to, someone might be in a wheelchair. So we know then when we're designing this house that we're going to do a bungalow or we're going to do an accessible lift. So all of this, um, all of the features for the house come from knowing our users. And that's exactly what you want to do when you're doing... Um, research for websites and apps you want to find out who your target audience is what their specific problems are so we design something that they love and then the next stage is um it's ideate so we've got our pro we, we know our users we know the problem and we know the problem we're trying to solve and the ideate stage is basically where we uh, try and get as many ideas out as possible so as designers we start off really lo-fi so we start with sketching and then um, through that, we can get kind of through as many ideas as possible. We normally do little workshops where we'll get uh, what we call stakeholders in. And these are key people from the business. Th this could even be a user who, who lives in the house. We will design something and we'll do it with them. So we know that what we design on paper is what they want. We try and get everything involved at this stage. We can throw it away. Um, really cheap to do. So we know when we have that sketch, we know that it's going to be acceptable by the users and, and the business like it. So we can then move forward through the idea process to uh, the next step, which is prototype. And that is where we then take that and we make a, a more high fidelity prototype. So uh, in this example, we're going to make a little model of the house uh, just to show the users. Um, but when we're designing websites and apps, we might go onto Figma and we might make a prototype, which is a realistic looking um, website or an app. So once we've then prototyped it we then go on to the next stage which is test which is where we then bring the users in and we say okay what do you think of the model of the house is this everything uh, you want and they might say oh uh, we've got two cars so i'll have to make the driveway bigger or if we're designing a website or an app people might say um I want to see different images of the clothes if I'm doing an e-commerce thing, so I will design that in. So I'm always designing with the people I'm designing for kind of in the process. And then once the testing step is done, we move on to the final step, which is implement. So, so I know when I hand over to uh, my model to the builders, so I'll hand over the model, which is the prototype, and I'll hand over the architectural plans and everything they need. They can then build the house and they're not asking questions where the windows go because they know everything is in place. The same as when I hand over my work to developers, they know uh, where the buttons go, they know everything about the website because I've handed over a fully fully tested prototype, which we know uh, the expensive part is the building. So it's gonna cost, you're gonna have to get builders, you're gonna have to get lots of people in, um, you know, bricklayers, roofers to do the house. When you do a website and app, you have to get front-end developers, back-end developers. It, the costly part is the building stage. So, I'm not giving them something that is not going to be accepted by the end user. 
and that is the design thinking process. You can apply it to anything. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up or a like. If you want to learn more about UI UX design, check out my course at Course Careers. If not, watch the next video. See you soon.